One of the survey questions was, how good of a listener do you believe yourself to be? 75% of respondents identified as average to above average listeners. 75% of us think we're pretty good listeners. Well, it was interesting, the same subset, the same survey, the folks were asked, how do you feel your colleagues do in terms of listening? How well do your colleagues listen? Only 12.5% rated their colleagues as average to above average listeners. So we've got 75% of us thinking, hey, we're pretty darn good at this. And we only have 12 and a half of us who think anyone else, everyone else is average to above average at listening. Aspire listeners, that is the wonderful voice of Bradley James Davies, a great friend of mine, as we are going to be discussing the power of listening. Bradley has a brand new book coming out here soon, and we're going to be discussing that further. Before we do that, though, I would love to just mention real quick that my wonderful co-author, Charlie Peck, and myself have created a brand new podcast called The Language of Behavior, which will be launching October 30th. We're so excited about that, which is the same title as our new book with Connected Ed Publishing. Definitely go check it out on your favorite podcast platform as we're going to be discussing a lot about student behavior as we provide new alternative strategies, share some research, and occasionally have a fantastic guest on the podcast. So excited to collaborate with Charlie on this project. So stay tuned as we're going to be making a lot of announcements on this podcast in regards to free webinars, our book, and some additional free resources to you as an educator. As we know, this is a topic that is so very important in our schools and our district. Before we jump on the conversation with Branley, I just wanted to talk about our featured sponsored S'more. As an administrator, obviously communication is huge with our stakeholders and our parents, and I was always struggling to create beautiful school newsletters people actually read. And that's when we started to do some research and look for the best possible answer to this problem. And right away, we found that S'more was just the most wonderful tool to create newsletters. And the reason for that is it's super simple to get started. They have hundreds of customizable templates that you can add your own text, images, videos, links, polls, and more to create just the perfect newsletter for your school community. In addition to that, you can actually auto-translate your newsletters into 100 plus languages for your families and access detailed analytics to see who is opening your emails and clicking on your links. I'm a data guy, so I always was digging in there to see what was connecting with folks and what was interesting topics and resources for our families. It's super simple, easy, and effective. So to get started today, head over to s'more.com slash teach better, and you'll get $50 off your first year of any of the S'more subscription plans. When you click on s'more.com slash teach better in the show notes, you'll actually see the discount immediately on your subscription plan, and there's multiple options to fit your needs on your campus. Now, let's jump on with Bradley, who's just a absolutely wonderful author, speaker, and leader as we dive into this imperative topic of the power of listening. Welcome back, everyone, to Aspire to Lead, where we will be discussing the visions, inspirations, and experiences from top educational leaders. My name is Joshua Stamper, and you can connect with me on Twitter or on Instagram at Joshua double underscore Stamper. All right, Aspire listeners, thank you so much for joining once again this week. I have a special guest. You're on YouTube. This is a familiar face as he was on not too long ago, although surprisingly longer than I anticipated. It was actually July of 2023, which is crazy. Episode 245. Bradley James Davies is with us and he's got a brand new book called Next Level Listening, How to Listen Like Your Life Depends on It Because It Does. I absolutely love this title. So we're going to dive into this book talk about where this was established, which was through, was through his speaking. And I know it's been so impactful for so many educators. And with that, my good friend, Bradley, thank you so much for coming back on to Aspire to Lead. Happy to be here. Awesome. So let's kind of get an update because like I said, I do this with everybody. It's it's like, I feel like you were on just like last week or two weeks ago, and then I find out it's been a year. So can you just give us an update of what's been going on in your world? Yeah, it's crazy that it's been a year. I feel like it's only been a few days as well. And following your success has been exciting. So huge congrats to you and thrilled about the impact you're having. Gosh, going back two years ago now, December 2nd will be the second anniversary of publishing my first book, School Leadership from A to Z. And you know that was the initial way that you and I came into contact and had our initial conversation. So 
From there, you know, some speaking opportunities arose. And one in particular, about a year ago, stepped in for a friend who had a speaking opportunity and he had to back out last minute. And the speaking opportunity was on leadership as coaching because of my executive leadership coaching background. And so I had about a month to prepare. And so much of that talk was about being a compelling listener and offering compelling questions. And I was just over overwhelmed by the positive response to that initial talk. And so I was invited to another speaking engagement and reframed it as next level listening. And then from that talk, I was invited to three more to give three more talks and workshops on next level listening. And so from what was my focus in school leadership and supporting leaders through coaching, this new mission kind of emerged around listening and really developed a belief in my Georgetown training to be an executive leadership coach that anyone leading people should have an executive leadership coach. And I continue to have that belief. But in my work with clients and then doing this speaking and listening, really have grown to believe that really the best leaders are the best listeners as well. And then beyond leadership, started to really get the feedback that, wow, these listening skills, super simple, but these listening skills are having an incredible impact on people's lives, both at work and at home, across all of their relationships. So really over the last two years, it's gone from a school leadership focus to now expanding to include wellness and now this focus on listening. So excited to take this content from my workshops and talks, bring it into a book and, you know, really have committed to speaking up for listening and, and sharing these skills with the world. Oh, so exciting to have educators here your message and be like, oh, that resonates so much. I want to bring you into my district or to another conference. And uh, I love when that happens, when you can see something that they know is going to be impactful for tomorrow. And so listening is such a huge topic. I know me and you have had conversations prior about just how many books are out there about speaking, but not so much on listening which is amazing because listening is such a key factor, especially in leadership. And I would love for you just to share kind of the feedback of, of folks and you know what is so impactful that they're grabbing from your workshop and, and from your presentation specifically. You know, it's, it's fascinating to me, Josh. If you Google become a better communicator, almost everything you're going to see is content on being a better speaker. And there's a survey and the data I took from this great book called How to Listen by Oscar Tromboli. And he cites a survey of English speaking companies, English speaking employees. And one of the survey questions was, how good of a listener do you believe yourself to be? 75% of respondents identified as average to above average listeners. 75% of us think we're pretty good listeners. Well, it was interesting, the same subset, the same survey, the folks were asked, how do you feel your colleagues do in terms of listening? How well do your colleagues listen? Only 12.5% rated their colleagues as average to above average listeners. So we've got 75% of us thinking, hey, we're pretty darn good at this. And we only have 125 of us who think anyone else, everyone else is average to above average at listening. So part of my challenge as a, someone who speaks up for listening now is very few of us feel confident in our ability to speak, but clearly 75% of us feel pretty confident and our ability to listen, but it's just not true. And that was true of me, Josh. I've learned through my own training that I was actually formerly a pretty lousy listener. And through these skills and tactics and tips and tricks, you can up your game immediately. So, you know, folks who participate in my workshops and my talks really have appreciated the do's and don'ts of next level listening. And then a big part of listening is asking high quality questions. So what's the anatomy of a high quality question? And then the opposite of that is what I call question kryptonite. And so we have fun really exploring those. And then we pick on, you know, podcast pros like yourself and, and show them and reveal like, gosh, even the expert listeners out there are making these simple mistakes that are compromising one's ability to connect with other people. Because the ultimate goal of next level listening is more information and more intimacy. And my gosh, if you can increase the amount of information you have in your home, in your organization, and if you can increase the amount of intimacy, connection in your home or any organization you're part of, wow, the results are incredible. All right, so I'm curious, which episode did you use of mine as your evidence? 
<laughs> oh, you're you're lucky. I went with even bigger fish in the sea, so I've, I've left you alone, Josh. I've left oh, you alone. Great. I, I love the three things that you had just said. So, can we do the the do's and the don'ts of, of listening? Yeah. So, a few that I'll highlight. One is educators that I I really like, and I think um, your listeners being in the ed space will appreciate is a lesson we teach to our kindergartners in morning circle or our middle schoolers in middle school advisory. And that is the concept of three, then me, instead of, well, three me, and then maybe someone else gets to speak. So we teach kids, hey, in, in a circle or any conversation, wait until three others have contributed to the conversation before you decide to weigh in yourself. It's a really great guideline. So that's one I appreciate. Another one that I've found myself teaching the kids for decades is, hey, you have two ears and one mouth. So we should listen twice as much as we speak. And that's a pretty good standard. Well, next level, the next level listening standard is the 80-20 rule. Seek to speak 20% of the less of the time and seek to listen 80% or more of the time. It's a whole new standard. So if you fall short of that, you can stumble upon the two ears and one mouth. But that next level standard, that next level listening standard to do is the 80-20 rule. Seek to speak 20% of the less of the time and listen 80% or more of the time. A few others that come come to mind. Have you seen the YouTube video called Leadership Lessons from Dancing Guy by Derek Sivers? Okay. Is this the one where they talk about the different roles at a concert? With... Yeah, you got the you got the hippie dude dancing at the yes, concert. I have seen he, creates, he creates the movement. He talks yes. about leadership being over glorified, value of being a first follower, etc. Well, that yep. underscores a uh, do of next level listening. And that is that next level listeners speak last. This is particularly important for leaders. So Josh, you and I have had formal leadership roles in schools. We're meeting with our leadership team. You know, we're at the circle table. There are eight other folks, eight other colleagues at the, at the table with us. And let's say we're speaking about something as innocent as carpool. And you have an idea of how to improve it and you speak first and invite your team to give you feedback. Well, on the surface, that's a very innocent overture. Yet what you've done is you've placed your leadership colleagues, you being the leader, your subordinates, people who report to you, you've placed them in a very complicated situation in terms of power dynamics. So the reality is you're not gonna get the feedback you really want. And you're thinking, hey, I'm Josh, I'm a really nice guy. Of course, they can just speak freely. And that's true in your own mind, but it's not true in their minds because there is a power dynamic at play. So next level listeners, particularly from a leadership context, will speak last. So instead of saying, hey, I, Josh, have this idea of carpool that is gonna make things so much more efficient and safe for children, please give me feedback. Well, instead you say, hey, I think we have some opportunities to improve carpool. I'd love to hear folks' ideas. Now you have your own ideas in your head. So all of a sudden Billy and Jenny and Stacy start to you know, resonate around an idea that you thought was good already. Well, now as a, as a leader, you have the opportunity to affirm them and support them and invest the resources into the solution that they've envisioned. But you've not compromised your power dynamic because you've chosen to speak last instead of speak first. And so it's a wonderful do for next level listening. And then the last one that comes to mind that I would say is a do versus a don't in next level listening is that next level listeners function in curiosity mode, not in convinced mode. And, you know, curiosity mode has a few characteristics. One, it, it, it includes a gentle attachment to outcome, not a fierce or firm attachment to outcome. And, and two, the, the fundamental core question of curiosity mode is, what might I learn in this conversation? as compared and contrasted with convinced mode is the question for convinced mode is how might i enlighten in this conversation and of course we see this in the current political environment right a little bit and then you know the core value of curiosity mode is humility where as the core value of convinced mode is hubris so to stay in curiosity mode what i um, teach folks is a great way to start questions is just to say I'm curious, comma, blah, blah, blah. I'm curious about X, Y, Z. If you just lead with, I'm curious to know more about, you tend to stay in curiosity mode, whereas something about the human condition leads us to convinced mode. But when we're in convinced mode, we're no longer learning. We're no longer open to having our imagination expanded. So curiosity mode is huge. And 
And that leads me to then the last one is the do of next level listeners is that next level listeners ask high quality questions. And you know, that's something we can transition into. I think the biggest bang for your buck in terms of upping your listening game is in how we frame questions to get more information and and ultimately more intimacy as well. Yeah, I love the idea of increasing your communication, but to really channel it into listening. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. You can find out more at teachbetter.com slash podcast. Now let's get back to the episode. That's probably a great segue into asking higher quality questions. And sometimes too, I know I'm just thinking as you were talking, just like kind of reflecting on my own leadership of being so busy sometimes of just trying to ask simple, quick questions to move on to the next problem and not really keeping my focus to the conversation at hand. And I definitely was prey to that. And I would love for you just to kind of expand on the, the questioning specifically and, and how to, to do that better as a leader. You know, one thing that comes to mind when you speak about being so busy as leaders, and this is a, a slight aside to the work I do around listening, but when I work with leadership clients, we talk about the one three one concept. Mm -hmm. An employee comes to you and they have a concern, they have a problem, they have something that they want you to solve for them. And the one three one paradigm is fantastic. The the first one is, hey Josh, please summarize for me as succinctly as you can the challenge at hand. You got one minute to do it or less. Ready, go. And then the three is, okay, what are three possible solutions? What are three possible ways forward? Okay, thanks so much. And then the next, the last one is, okay, out of those three, which do you recommend we, we embrace? Now, again, as leader, you hear those three, you might have a fourth, but probably one of those three is going to be something you're thinking already. And then yep. boom, you have that opportunity to empower, celebrate, and support um, that leader with the solution. So one, three, one, I love when we get busy is to, to pivot to that paradigm. Um, as far as the anatomy of a high quality question, this is where I have the most fun with the, the talks I give and the workshops that I facilitate. Super fast, anatomy of a high quality question, very short preamble, open-ended, one question at a time, uses the speaker's language. And of course we stay in curiosity mode. So the opposite of that, of that is almost always with folks you know with whom we're speaking it's so indicting because the opposite is question kryptonite long preambles and we're all guilty of the long preamble especially when we want to express empathy oh josh thanks for sharing that i remember a time when i was boom 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 boom, boom. and before you know it you're two or three minutes and you're just talking about yourself instead of being fully present for the person sharing with you. So question kryptonite, long preambles. Uh, number two, close-ended. Did you have a good day? Was your day good? Well, yes, no, they're close-ended instead of open-ended. Hey, what was your day like? Now that's open. Um, question stacking is one parents and teachers fall victim to all of the time. The kid gets in the car at the end of the school day and the question stacking commences. How was your day, Josh? How'd the math test go? What did Bradley have to say to you? When is the test um, math test? And did you eat your whole lunch? It's like question, 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 question. And you know, I joke that the kids probably like, hey, can I just go home and have a cocktail first and 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 chill out a little bit before we have you know this this conversation? So question stacking is part of question kryptonite. And then this one is nuanced. Part of the anatomy of a high quality question is using the speaker's language. Question kryptonite is using listener's language. So a real nuanced and next level way to craft a question is just to use a word that the speaker used as a building block for the next question you offer them. Josh, you say to me, hey, Bradley, I'm super sad about X, Y, Z. High quality next, next level listening question would be, Josh, what are you sad about? I'm using your language. I'm honoring what you've chosen to share with me. I'm not offering any interpretation myself. Now, question kryptonite would be I use my own language, my own interpretation. You say, hey, Bradley, I'm, I'm super sad about X, Y, Z. Question kryptonite would be, hey, Josh, so what are you unhappy about? What are you frustrated about? What's discouraging to you about that? Well, I, 
I, Josh, I didn't say any of those things. I said, I'm sad. And then, so if I just have the discipline as a next level listener to use the speaker's language to then, you know, begin to get to the heart of the matter, that is a, a trick of the trade that it absolutely yields one just amazing yield in terms of more information and more intimacy. And then of course, question kryptonite is staying in convinced mode. Um, that's just about as bad as it gets. And so anytime yeah. we can just say, hey, I'm curious to know more about, we know we're in curiosity mode and we're almost always safe there. Awesome. Well, I want to dive into your book more so because I, I want to learn all of the things that are in there because I know it's going to be just such a, a beautiful resource for our listeners. But before I do that, I want to talk about what I was slamming while you're talking and while I was listening, which is Magic Mind. For those who were watching on YouTube, yes, it sharpens the mind, lowers stress, and calms yourself. So I take this before any of my runs, before I get on a podcast, before I go and speak in front of a district or at a conference. I slam one of these guys. It's all natural. And I have felt it ever since I took it. I mean, I've been taking Magic Mind for almost nine months now. Um, I get a subscription. It comes right to my door. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, for this month, specifically, in the month of October, Magic of Mind is allowing the Aspire listeners to get 40%. Yes, 40% off of your subscription. If you head over to magicmind.com slash aspire to lead 40 and use the code aspire lead 40, you get 40% off your subscriptions. You can cancel at any time. They have a money back guarantee, which I guarantee you won't need. It's a phenomenal product. It tastes good. My teenagers, my wife, I mean, even my two-year-old loves to drink Magic Mind. So I got to fight them all off to make sure that I'm the one <laughs> able to drink it. But it's super fun to take on trips. We just went to Montana as a family, threw it in my luggage, took it on the trip, went hiking in the mountains and grabbed one and drank it. it. Gives you energy. Like I said, it keeps you focused. And I mean, I think it's perfect to what we're talking about, Bradley, as far as trying to be our best version as a leader and, and making sure that we're on point both with our communication and with our listening. And I assure you that Magic Mind will do that for you. I'm going to throw the code up one more time for those who are watching on YouTube. And I'll have this in the show notes, magicmind.com slash aspiredly40 and use the code aspiredly40 in your checkout to get that discount. And I promise you, you're going to absolutely love these little drinks. They're phenomenal. All right. With that, Bradley, I want to touch on the book. So if someone is interested in all the things that we're talking about, because I think this is so important. So the book, Next Level Listening, How to Listen Like Your Life Depends on It Because It Does. How can they find more information? So the the goal is to have this out into the public by April 2025. So it is in process and moving forward. And it, it'll be available on Amazon, etc. But I just encourage folks to go over to my website, www.bradleyjamesdavies.com, where you know, I'm blogging about next level listening, et cetera. And then to follow me on social media as well, where, you know, as I'm, I'm writing this, I'm putting forward the, the content because I want to share it as quickly as possible. So folks can start implementing it as quickly as possible. Yeah. So congrats on your second book. I can't wait to get it in my hands and be able to share it out on social media too. But with that, Bradley, I know you're speaking on other topics too and, and supporting districts and, and other educators on a lot of different topics. So will you just share how you're supporting folks? Yeah, so I have a handful of keynotes and workshops that I've been doing for the past year. Next Level Leadership, um, Top Traits of Transformational Leaders has been super popular. Next Level Wellness, um, How to Crush It Without Getting Crushed, is probably the talk and workshop nearest and dearest to my heart. You know, I do, particularly with school leaders, have a school leadership wellness report card process that we go through, and it's really powerful. Partner with school leaders in that way. And then, of course, other, other talks on wellness, leadership, and listening has really been my sweet spot. And it's been a real honor to, to speak to schools and conferences and districts about these important topics. Let's talk about some advice. You know, I always love coming back to this question for all my guests as far as, you know, amplifying and helping those who are listening with their leadership journey. So if there's something they could do tomorrow or the next day to enhance their leadership journey, what would you advise them to do? Well, if I'm sticking with the next level listening theme, two things come to mind that are super simple and have a huge return on investment. One is let the silence do the heavy lifting. Let the silence do the heavy lifting. I joke that I'm a period double space guy. Like I'm not a period single space guy. I'm also an Oxford comma guy. I don't understand the world that believes that they're, you know, the Oxford comma isn't the right way to go, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but when we think about let the silence do the heavy lifting, when, when you're talking with someone, 
when they finally put a period on a sentence, wait for the double space as well. I challenge myself in my leadership coaching context and also my personal relationships, when I finally sense that the person has come to a period at the end of the sentence, that double space is 10 seconds actually. And it feels awkwardly long, Josh, let me tell you. But letting the silence do the heavy lifting is a real gift. In my workshops, I do a two for two challenge where you sit with a partner, they bring you a challenge that they're working on. It's just an everyday challenge. It doesn't need to, need to be something deep, life-changing, but just an everyday challenge. And for two minutes, they sit quietly and listen to the person unpack their problem or challenge. And then the last two minutes, for a total of four, the last two minutes, the only question they can ask is, what else? And without exception, after that exercise, Every single participant who is the speaker says they have come to better clarity around their problem or challenge. There is power in just providing a sacred space to listen and to have your words be received. And so the other piece of advice I would have that has so simple to implement and has incredible return on investment is that one question participants are allowed to ask in that two for two activity. And that is what else? Powerful questions start with what? What else? I think marriages could be saved and brought to deeper levels of intimacy with just this simple phrase, sweetheart, what else? Sweetheart, what else? Leaders, team, what else? That two word question, if you're not ever gonna ask another question the rest of your life, if that's the only question you can use, use that one, what else? And if you couple letting the silence do the heavy lifting, with that one two word question, what else? Your next level listening skills are gonna go through the roof. Your leadership's gonna go through the roof. The intimacy you have with your friends and family, colleagues, et cetera, is gonna go through the roof. So let the silence do the heavy lifting and embrace that powerful question. What else? It's awesome. So powerful. All right, so I've had your website on the screen throughout our conversations and you obviously had touched on it about finding more information about your book, but I would love for folks to connect with you on social media. I'd love for them to reach out to you, especially if they can bring you into their school districts or their organization. So, you know, how would they connect with you on social media? Yes, yeah, so I'm most active on, of course, you can find me on LinkedIn, Bradley James Davies, Instagram, Bradley.James.Davies. And then on Facebook as well, Bradley James Davies. So we'd love folks to reach out and we'd love to partner with folks to bring this message to the masses. My, my mission is to speak up for listening now um, as well as support leaders. So um, I'd be thrilled to partner with folks in that regard. Definitely. And of course, you know, on Bradley's website, he's got, like he said, the blogs and some other resources for you. So head over there. For those who are looking for something easy as far as the connection, you can always go over to joshdamber.com. I've got all the links in the show notes for you. In addition to that, if you're watching on YouTube, love for you to subscribe, hit the like button on the podcast, either the audio version or the video. Obviously, the video has got the links up as we're talking, which is a benefit. And then, of course, I'll have that in the description for you. And then, of course, I want to just highlight Magic Mind as the sponsor for this conversation. And you know the month is almost ending here. I can't believe it. October is almost done. And this code, this discount will go away at the end of the month. So make sure you jump on that, get in the savings because that's the biggest thing for my listeners and anything I'm doing, any, any product, anyone coming on, I want to make sure that I'm one, giving you free resources, but two, giving you the best price possible and all the products that I believe in. And Magic Mind is one of those. So head over to magicmind.com slash aspiredly40. Use the code AspireLeaf40 to get your 40% off your subscription. And like I said, I, I love this product. I think everyone will benefit from that, especially my leaders. And then uh, with that, make sure that you're connecting with Bradley. I'm going to put his link real quick, BradleyJamesDavies.com. Uh, make sure that you're connecting with him on social media because, my friend, you are amazing. I love having conversations with you, connecting with you, and then also seeing just how successful you've been since the last time we've talked. You, you've done so much wonderful work with school districts and with educators and leaders. I'm just amazed and, and hope nothing but the best for you, my friend. Well, the respect goes right back to you, Josh. Thanks so much. I appreciate this friendship and just have huge, huge gratitude for the work that you're doing.